I'm thirsty. Yeah, I'm really thirsty. I'm gonna go get some water. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you are watching Life is Monet. I have not filmed a video in a few weeks because I've been moving and I'm in a whole new state, in a whole new house, in a whole new area and I made it COVID free. So really proud of that. And yeah, July was an interesting month because I actually did not upload a July TBR because your girl didn't know what she wanted to read. I couldn't commit to anything, but August is very different. I've already uploaded my August TBR. I'm only reading books by indigenous authors. And yeah, if you're looking for indigenous recommendations or just so you know what I'm reading so that when I do my wrap up, you can check in or check back for the books that you were really interested in me reading because I'm going to have a lot to say about August and I have a lot to say about the books I read in July. So let's just get into it. I normally only read like heavy fantasy books and this month I read quite a few contemporaries and a thriller and I'm really proud of myself for expanding my horizons, dipping my toe in the water and yeah, let's just talk about it. So first up, I did finish the entire Broken Earth trilogy this month and I'm gonna do a completely separate video of me giving my thoughts on the entire Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. So I'm not gonna really talk about those books in this video because <laughs> I'm lost and I don't know I don't know how I feel. So we're gonna take time to collect our thoughts and then I will upload a separate video of me talking about that series. But I did wanna put that in this video that I did read both of those books this month. So the next book that I wanna talk about, if you've been following me on Twitter or on Instagram, I have been raving, 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 raving about this beautiful monstrosity of a book. I read Priory of the Orange Tree and I love the Priory of the Orange Tree. I was just like a massive book with great characters. It's female, female romance. I felt like the, the timing of the book and the plot of the book just kind of came together really well. And I was like, yo, Priory kind of slaps. And then this book said, hold my boots because it was phenomenal. I, I rarely ever use the word phenomenal for a book. So can we just note that I said phenomenal, astronomical, out of this world. It was fantastic. Sometimes people will tweet out little fun things like describe your favorite book in the most boring way. The synopsis is that because when you read the synopsis, you don't understand. Like I read the synopsis and I was like, well, this is a big book for that synopsis. But baby, baby, Matthew Ward, God's level, okay? This book was so amazing. Matthew knows what high stakes mean. When I tell you every 15 or 20 pages, I was like, I was gripping this book. Like I just got this book and it, the cover, you guys can't really see it, but the cover is kind of all beat up because when I was reading it, I was gripping, I was gripping the freaking book, the characters. All the characters are savage. Okay, you know how like in one, when you have like a fantasy book like that where there's like an impending war and a lot of battles and soldiers and warriors, like when I tell you every character is about that life, every character will dislocate your head from its shoulders, every character. There was a few, there was like one or two moments in this book where one of the characters was like, you're funny, you're cute, when I get up off these shackles, I'ma kill you and baby when they came out the shackles, murder, murder left and right. I love this book. It built up to like this climax and the climax actually happened literally 50% of the book. So I was like, if, if we're already at this point, 50% of the book, then like where else can it go? And like the book gave you a villain and then it gave you a real villain and then it gave you a villain that you didn't even know was a villain. And I think if you are someone who likes Game of Thrones, you will like this book. It has some of the same similarities to Game of Thrones, but it's, I wouldn't say that it's similar to Game of Thrones, it's different. But it's like one of those, if you like this, you'll like this kind of thing. But think of Game of Thrones like without all the boring parts in between. Think of Game of Thrones with like without the boring and like plot dead driven points. Like this book, I wanna say every chapter was just like, I don't remember there ever being like a boring part. I think the first 10 pages, somebody died. Um, there was a scandal in the first 20 pages. There was a riot, an uprising in the first 50 pages. Another death in, within the first 100 pages. Like it just keeps you so gripped. And I just believe that like, even though this book is really dense, 
it reads as light I think if your comprehension level is not the highest when it comes to fantasy because it's hard for you to process like the magic system and stuff like that I think that this book would be very easy to understand in the same way that Jade City was except it's gonna be very big this book is 770 pages so if you're someone who wants to get more comfortable reading massive books I would definitely suggest Legacy of Ash just because it's easy to comprehend there's nothing that's too overwhelming um unless you don't like death because i don't know what to tell you okay i love a good death i love great deaths in a book so far right now this book is like in my top read of the year because i'm just so i just loved it so much and legacy of steel actually comes out in november so i'm so glad that i was able to read this book before legacy of steel because baby when i say i pre-ordered when i say i already bought it be on the lookout for that vlog because I am so excited. Like, I just found out the book two was coming and it's already my most anticipated release of the year. Honestly, like, that's the thing. And the cover of Legacy of Steel is just so beautiful to me and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. And I just know that Matthew Ward is going to take us on a ride and Legacy of Steel is supposed to be another chunky book and you guys know we love chunky books so I cannot wait for that one. The next book that I read was actually an arc for When No One Is Watching that I received from HarperCollins. So big shout out to them for sending me this book in advance. I have not really read a thriller and this book was so, so interesting because it's written by Alyssa Cole, who is typically a romance author and she's black and she wrote a thriller. So I was also kind of interested in just an author stepping outside of their normal genre. And when I tell you that this book, this book so when I was reading it it was actually interesting I liked some of the topics that she was touching on I actually kind of was okay with the main character but I, it just felt like it wasn't high stake enough it just felt like it was it wasn't going as far as I wanted it to go but then that could just be me because I've been reading a lot of adult fantasy and you know that adult fantasy is hard hitting and heavy and I haven't been doing too good with like YA books just because I, the stakes aren't high enough like it's just minor childish things and it just wasn't hitting. So when I was reading this one, I liked it. I read it really fast. I think it only took me like a day and a half to read this book. I read it pretty fast and it was like a 3.5 out of 5. But then those last 50 pages, Alyssa Cole was like, you want high stakes? <laughs> you want pressure? Wait for it. Like, I got you. And the last 50 pages of this book just put it up to a 5 out of 5 for me. It was, I'm still thinking about this book just because it's almost like it has like a get out feel and this book would make a really, really great movie. I actually hope that somebody does take the idea of this book and put it into a movie because I think that it would do as well as the movie Get Out did. But basically we follow this character who has returned home from this nasty divorce and she's lost. She's confused about herself. She's unsure of herself. She's having self doubts and her ex-husband made her feel crazy and now she's like well was I crazy was I paranoid or is there something to really be worried about she comes home her neighborhood in Brooklyn is very different than what it used to be people are moving left and right people are disappearing there's a lot of gentrification going on there's a new pharmaceutical company trying to open up a facility here and new white neighbors are coming into the neighborhood and they're outcasting them and targeting them and people are just being forced out of their homes and it just it felt so realistic because today we witnessed so many cases of gentrification and it felt really real and I think that she's a reliable main character but at the same time she has a history of being excessively paranoid and she's shooken like this is a black woman who's on edge like she's nervous she's not eating she's not sleeping everything makes her jump everything makes the hair stand up on her back so you're like you see what she sees and then it's like well damn are we tripping like are we crazy because I see what you see and if you crazy then I gotta be crazy and I know I'm not crazy I make it make sense and just the way the plot twist in this book went and like how far she went into the gentrification she talked she touched on so many things about people not understanding the heritage of a true black community what gentrification really is people think that it's taking a bad neighborhood and building it up but what is your definition of bad what is your definition of something that's torn down if your definition of turning a community around is taking a black and brown community that isn't up to your white standards and putting more white people in there and forcing the brown and black people out is that really gentrification or are you just racifying the freaking neighborhood it's just feels like 
only black and brown neighborhoods are targeted when it comes down to gentrification. Those are the only neighborhoods that are really trying to be built up. And she talks about how market value goes down, bank loads goes down, house value or the values of people's home goes down when it's a black and brown community. And people take these communities because they're cheap on the market, bring a big company in, bring in more jobs, raise the prices on the rent, raise the prices on the housing, and just turns the community around. And like, where do these black and brown people go? Like, what happens to them when they're forced out of their homes and they can't afford to live? Where they want to live anymore and gentrification is just such a big topic in our world right now and I just feel like it was even more hard-hitting because of the climate that we're in but I have to say that I actually did enjoy this book even though I'm not really a big fan of thrillers it actually made me want to read a lot more thrillers in the upcoming months and yeah this book should be out I don't I'm not sure maybe it comes out in September September 1st or September 5th but definitely definitely pick it up because there is so much to dissect in this book and so much that happens and I don't want to give away too much because it is a thriller and I feel like any piece of information kind of gives away from the plot but I highly highly recommend that you guys pick this book up when it comes out because yeah it was actually very good so the next book that I read was actually an arc as well and it was the black kids now the black kids is following this teenage girl named Ashley who has white friends. She goes to a white school. Her parents are very well off. She has a Spanish nanny. It's set in LA during the time period where Rodney King was beaten and the officers who beat him were acquitted on trial. And this book was very interesting because you think that it's gonna really follow the Rodney King murders. It doesn't follow them at all. The Rodney King aspect sets the climate for this world that she's in and she sees it everywhere. She's hearing it on the news. She's hearing it on TV. People are talking about it left and right. But our main character is so disassociated from her life and it's just hard for her to connect. And honestly, it took me a long time to even tolerate her because I didn't like her. She let so many things start off her back, so many racist and microaggressive comments. And her sister is this person who feels passionate enough to go out and riot and fight and make a difference and make a change and our main character just doesn't understand her sister she doesn't like she's just so disconnected from her life and it just bothered me until I read more of the book and started to really understand more about the character this book touches on so so many things how women are treated in the black community how black kids are seen tokenism is discussed in this book mental health generational mental health suicide is covered in this book like how something traumatic can happen to you in your life and you can try to cope with it and try to learn how to live with it for next 20 30 40 years of your life and then sometimes when people commit suicide it's not from something that happened recently in their life or something that they can't deal with very often it's people who have tried to get over something they've tried to live with it and I feel like that's not really discussed um, in mass media on TV shows or in movies that sometimes something can stick with you and you can walk around with that pain and that pressure and like that heaviness your whole life until you literally can't carry it anymore and I just feel like if we talked more about that people will be more understanding of you know what I'm saying what it is to suffer from PTSD and depression and mental illness and how also in black communities how it's hard for us to understand people who have mental issues because like there's this line in the book where the maid or the nanny is trying to describe to the main character why her parents and her sister can't get along and she said that um her to her parents being sad is a choice and they don't understand that being sad is a way to be sometimes you can just be sad it doesn't have to be a reason it doesn't have to be a choice it doesn't have to be something that you picked or, or brought upon yourself you sometimes it's hard to just choose to be happy sometimes you are just sad and I really love that it discussed that in this book when talking about that especially in black communities because we don't put enough emphasis on mental health and we don't put enough emphasis on how important it is to get help and to be able to talk about it also something that I wanted to talk about in this book because like I said earlier I didn't understand the main character and like the passion that I feel as a black woman but then I really started to think about this book and I read an article recently that was talking about the difference between when white people see one of their own getting killed and when black people see one of their own getting killed, especially when it comes down to police brutality and just the way that we interact with officers, period. White people seem to often seem to compartmentalize where they see a situation and they're like, if I would have done something different or if I would have worn my clothes different or been nicer to the officer, or been more complacent and more listening of the officer, something different would have happened to me. I would not have had the same results as this person who has seemed to have lost their life. If they had done this or that, or if they had done something very different, then things would have been different. And so I feel like that's something that's to be expected because they don't see race as often as a black person does. So when it comes down to black people, we don't 
don't compartmentalize. We internalize. We know that it doesn't matter if we were lighter skin, if we were darker skin, if our hair was smoother, it doesn't matter if we were nice, it doesn't matter if we offered him coffee, gum, a donut, it doesn't matter if we did everything opposite of what this person did that ended up costing them their life. We could very well still die too, which is why we feel every death of a black man or a black woman at the hands of an officer. We feel every death at the hands of someone who's being racist because we know that at the end of the day, it didn't come down to the way that they spoke or their manner or how intimidating they looked. It came down to the color of their skin. And we internalize that because we have the same skin color. There is no separating if we would have done something different. We're all in the same amount of danger at the end of the day just because we are black. And so we have this main character who is black, but she grew up in a white neighborhood. Her friends have all been white since she was four years old. She So she grows up in this environment where she's not used to internalizing. And so I think that helps her disconnect from her reality. And it frustrated me because I'm like, girl, like, how are you not riled up? How are you not passionate? How do you not have this fire? And it's because as someone who grew up in a black community, this is things that we kind of pick up on in our culture and we just internalize everything and we stand together and we band together and we fight together at the end of the day because we know that we are all we have. And I think that it took a long time for her to find that fire and to find how to be connected with her community. And honestly, after she did figure it out, after she did figure out just how at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much money your parents have. It doesn't matter if you've been best friends with this person since you were a child. It doesn't matter any of that because at the end of the day, your skin is still going to be black and you are always going to be a part of the black kids. And that was us also a, a Another thing that bothered me about the book about the main character because there is some black kids that go to her school that are almost like token black kids because they're there for academics or they're there for sports to be able to go to special colleges that schools in their community just wouldn't offer and she refers to the black kids as them or they or they sit together and they do this and I'm like how can you not go over there and talk to them be and it just made me realize that the community that we have being black and like how we come together and it's all like kumbaya it's just something that we get from just being in our culture and that someone who hasn't been around that and hasn't experienced that is going to be hard for them to process and hard for them to understand the main character had the perspective of someone who would be a mixed character to me it almost felt like when you were reading from her perspective that she felt that she was not black enough or not this or not hood enough she didn't listen to enough rap music she didn't dance or dress enough like the black kids in order for her to go and talk to them and that just really bothered me and I could get how some of the black kids felt towards her because it almost came across like snooty like why won't you chill with us there's not that many black kids in this school there's only a handful of us probably 7 or 13 at the most and we all got to stick together and then you just literally choose we're not they're not telling her to pick a side we're not saying oh leave your white friends and only come sit with us but it's like how can you choose to block us off and make us outsiders when at the end of the day your skin matches ours and I really learned to like that aspect of the book, but it just made the main character really hard for me to connect with because it was just so frustrating how she would let racist things that were said to her slide off and she would almost kind of put herself in danger sometimes and she was just able to really not feel it. And it also goes to show that if you're not connected to your culture and you're not connected to your heritage, who are you? And it just seemed like she wasn't really anybody. She wasn't even really herself until she found her connection to her heritage. So the next books that I read was The Assassin's Apprentice and The Starless Sea. I have a vlog of my entire reaction for both books that I will link in the cards above. If you guys want to know my thoughts and my ratings for those books, make sure you check out that video because it is solely dedicated to those two books that was a wild ride. The next book that I read is going to be The Year of the Witching. This was a debut from this author. Well, 4.5 out of 5 for me. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year before Legacy of Steel and I actually pre-ordered this and I was super excited to have it delivered to my house. This book did not disappoint. We follow a main character named Emmanuel whose mother died when she was born. She does not know who her father is. She's born a part of this commune cult type environment and they're super super religious and her mother has been outcast as a heretic before she died almost like a witch or you know a demon you know how religious people get it's basically about her uncovering the truth behind how her mother died how she is connected to being a witch how she is connected to some of the dark things that happen in this world and also uncovering the truth about her religion because there's a lot of violence and assault and just degrading things around women and there's this impending thing happening and she's torn between 
these are the people that she loved. They're her family. They're her friends. They were raised with her. She just doesn't want to see them all perish. But at the same time, sometimes they deserve it because of the way that they burn people and how they treat women and how they don't protect little girls. I'm someone who's really big on religion. I love history, as you guys know, and history and religion ties in very well together. You can't look at history without religion. And can you really know your religion if you don't know its history? So of course, of course, I know a lot about religion myself. And unfortunately, one of the problems that I tend to have with almost all religion is that it has a dark history with the way that it treats women. And that is discussed in this book in a way that kind of hits home for you, but it's not too heavy hitting. You have a mixed girl who's mixed with blackness and she's a witch and she's taking down the religious patriarch and what gets better than that. I really enjoyed this book and I look forward to more of what she puts out because her this book was the perfect amount of darkness perfect amount of the chilling adventures of sabrina but black and i was just really interested in that and honestly it didn't touch on the lucifer or like demonic satanic church uh aspect like sabrina does so it does not get that dark but it definitely gave me what i was missing when i watched sabrina which is a lot more blackness in the book and i hope that the author writes more like dark stuff i think that she would be the perfect author to write a dark academia because of how she wrote this book so i would definitely suggest it i did enjoy it and i'm looking for more things to come so the last book that i read i don't even know where it is right now it's somewhere in my house i don't know where it is right now but i will pop a picture up here i read this is my america i gave this book a five out of five it follows a character whose father is on death row and he's coming down to his last few days before they take his life and she's fighting for him tooth and nail and now her brother has been accused of a murder as well and the town of course are all ganging up on her the son of a murderer must also be a murderer so she's torn between trying to save her brother and her father and she uncovers a lot of secrets in her town and just how it all came out and how racist and biased people can be not only towards black people but towards outsiders i think also a lot of times what's not discussed is that there are racial hierarchies and then there are social and economic hierarchies you can be white and that doesn't mean that you're going to be accepted by all white people and they're going to defend you and protect you and just make sure that nothing bad ever happens to you if you're also poor a lot of poor white people or lower income white people live lives very similar to people of color except they're just white and so the elite the one percent they always protect their own they're always going to stand by themselves and so i feel like her family was targeted in this community because not only were they black but also they were outsiders they weren't a part of the elite part of their community they weren't on the in crowd and i think when you have both of those things going against you it just makes it that much harder for you to fight you're fighting against social and racial injustices and you don't have the money to put up or shut up it just makes it that much harder for you to get done what you're trying to get done and this book definitely covers that now there has been a recent conversation floating around different social media outlets about the pressure of being a black woman and how much we take on when it comes down to protecting black men and also protecting ourselves and at one point of the book it got really emotional for me not just because of what the author was saying or what the author was writing about but here we have a 17 year old girl who is overwhelmed and desperate to save two black men being someone who has family members who have been in and out of jail i've seen aunts and cousins and friends try to stand by loved ones when they're going to jail and i just know how much pressure it is to have one person going to jail and now we have a girl who's not even 18 yet taking on two people who might possibly be taking on the death penalty and just the way that it just showed some of the pressure that black women face when we're just trying to be as supportive we're trying to be the pillar of our communities we're trying to be the strong person that everybody thinks a black woman is and this girl was pretty much invincible she has these thoughts where she's like I am overwhelmed, I'm sick, I'm vulnerable, I'm tired, I'm in pain, I'm hurting. She knows it about herself, she realizes it about herself, but then she's like, I can't stop fighting. I have to keep going, I can't let them die, I can't let them go to jail, and I just really like felt that down to my bones where even when you feel tired and overwhelmed and you just wanna take a break, a pit stop, a water break, and like you literally just cannot, you have, have to keep going and going un until 
it's like we will give everything until we have nothing left and then we'll find something to give when <laughs> even when there's nothing left and I just felt like this book was thinking about that aspect of this book and reviewing or seeing it from that point of view just makes it hit that much harder because I am a black woman myself and like I said I do have loved ones who are in prison and I just remember how stressful that time period was for me and the people that were around me and I really think that this book touched on a lot of things there's one part of the book where um there's some threats and they're like oh well we don't think it's a serious threat because it came from some white kids probably some white kids just playing a joke or doing a little prank and it's probably not that serious and it's like <sighs> black kids walking down the street makes 12 cop cars come out somebody threatening to light my house on fire somebody sending me pictures of the kkk somebody burning crosses on my lawn like as if i'm martin luther king is a prank oh we don't have kkk out here oh we don't have those kind of racist supremacist groups out here it's just some kids joking i don't even want to get into that because if you've been following my channel then you know how i feel and i don't want to bring this video down and i don't want to go on a rant but if you know you know okay these little hee hee ha ha's jokey jokes that these kids be putting on are racially stemmed from things that they learn from their grandparents and their grandparents parents and it's in their family and I don't think it's funny I don't think it's a joke at all and I think that is very serious and if you're going to not take threats against my life with valid proof as serious then I mean what's the point of even calling you and this is my America and also in when no one's watching these books both touch on the aspect of what do you do when you can't call 911? What do you do when you're afraid and you're trying to defuse a situation and things are getting out of hand and you can't call 911 because they're going to see the color of your skin and instead of de-escalating the situation, they're going to raise it up. It's going to get out of hand. Bullets are going to start firing. People are going to start dying. So how do I handle this situation when I cannot call an officer of the law. I cannot call anybody to my rescue and you're just trying to figure out on your own. You take matters into your own hands and you do what you can because there is no protect and serve of all when your skin's black. Sure, you can call the police officer, but do you really wanna risk one of them being racist showing up at your door? Do you wanna risk uncovering something that's going to be of someone that they care about their friends their family and they're going to sweep it under the rug and act like you never spoke to them you never gave them evidence you never did any of these things because they're going to protect their own because of racial standards and also social standards and like i said these books both touch on that and there's just so much to dissect in these books so i highly highly recommend that you guys pick them up and read them they're not as hard hitting as you would expect them to be uh but there are a lot of social and racial comments commentaries to our world today and I would just say that check them out because I'm not someone who typically reads these genres and I ended up loving all of these books and they made me want to read more. So, so all the books that I read this month I had a really good reading month I enjoyed them all. Some of the audiobooks for these books were fantastic I love them. I also have an announcement I will be joining Kayla from Books and Lala in her book club we'll be reading The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones in November and we'll also be doing a live show this book was a new release so if you can get your hands on it please try to and join us in reading it in November I will see you guys in my next video bye